Merry Christmas Eve. <laughs> Merry Christmas Eve tonight. Uh, tonight, welcome and thank you for being a part of this service with us tonight. Thank you for uh, uh, just uh, getting your heart coming and just getting focused long enough to get your heart in the right place as we commence these uh, next two days of activities. Uh, what April is doing now as we start this service tonight is we are lighting all of the candles. We're in week four of Advent uh, tonight. Uh, there's some things I just want you to know of that we are doing tonight that are just, they're symbolic in some ways. For instance, as we light these candles and as we light what will be the center candle tonight, the Christ candle, uh, there will come a point in time where we have our our candle lighting and we all light our candles toward the end of the service and you'll see tonight you'll watch as i go and light my candle tonight uh that i will wear my candle tonight thank you dear thank you well i'm always putting things in the wrong place uh, yeah so it's a uh, uh so tonight the i will be lighting my candle from the christ candle i will then begin my journey to take someone and some light down here and we'll let that light spread to the sanctuary at that time. So once again, thank you for being here and I'm gonna, I'm gonna call uh, April forward uh, to do our reading from the Christ candle. Four weeks ago, we began the Advent season a season of getting ready for what is coming and a time to prepare our hearts for celebrating the real reason for Christmas. Each Sunday, as we lit a new candle in our Advent wreath, we were reminded of the gifts Jesus gives us and that his light overcomes the darkness of the world. Over the last four weeks, we have watched and waited in these gifts in hope for peace, in joy with love, and we know our redemption draws near. Tonight we light our last candle, the large white candle in the center. This candle reminds us that the light of the world was born on that first Christmas night long ago. People who walked in darkness saw a great light. Christ's coming makes hope, peace, joy, and love possible for every person everywhere. He came to save all who will repent and believe. Tonight, tonight we celebrate the light of Christ. And we light the Christ candle to remind us that the Christ must story isn't over. Christ will come again. May the light of Christ shine within our hearts more brightly than the light from these candles tonight. And like the angels and shepherds, may we go forth telling the good news, glorifying and praising God. Father, as we enter into this time of celebration of what you have done for us, Lord, I pray that you would get our hearts centered and in the right place. May we receive the blessing that you want us to receive and may we celebrate Christmas in the right way. Lord, right now, that presents are, what, are not what Christmas is all about, but this is all about you. So Father, tonight, the center focus tonight is not on gifts. It's not on presents. Father, may we take some time and remember you, Jesus, the whole reason for the season in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to ask, uh, right by, by the way, I'm going to ask kids, if, if you want to come up here with me, I'm going to ask you to sit in front of me. I'm going to get let you sit down here and you can sit on the floor. And I would like to share with you a story. Okay. Now, this story is something that maybe you've heard before, but it might, you might just hear it a little bit different. So let me share this with you. You ready? Twas the night before Christmas, before Jesus came. And all through the house, no, not a creature was praying, not, not one in the house. Their Bibles were laying on the shelf without care in hopes that Jesus would not come there. The children were dressing to crawl into bed, not once ever kneeling or bowing their head. And mom in her rocker with baby on her lap was watching the late show. 
while I took a nap. When out of the east there arose such a clatter, I sprang to my feet to see what was the matter. Away to the window I flew like a flash, tore open the shutters and threw up the stash. When what to my wondering eyes should appear but angels proclaiming that Jesus was here. With a light like the sun sending forth a bright ray, I knew in a moment this must be the day. The light of his face was what made me cover my head. It was Jesus returning just like he had said. And though I possessed worldly wisdom and wealth, I cried when I saw him in spite of myself. In the book of life, which he held in his hand was written the name of every saved man. He spoke not a word as he searched for my name. When he said, it's not there, my head hung in shame. The people whose names had been written with love, he gathered to take to his father above. With those who were ready, he rose without a sound, while all the rest were left standing around. I fell to my knees, but it was too late. I had waited too long, and this sealed my fate. I stood and I cried as they rose out of sight, only if only I had been ready tonight. In the words of this poem, the meaning is clear. The coming of Jesus is drawing near. There's only one life, and when comes the last call, we'll find that the Bible was true after all. That's a great story, isn't it? Yeah. It makes us all think about what's really important. Hey, what are you, what, what's going to, what's going to be the thing that's the most special thing that you're going to be doing over the next two days? Is it the presence or is it celebrating Jesus? Yes. Yes. And as much as that may be the answer, you know, I want to hear, I know deep down it's the answer that you know is important. God bless you. Thank you, kids. Okay. Would you stand with me as we all sing a very familiar song, Silent Night. Oh uh -huh. 
Charlie Brown. What kind of a tree is that? You are supposed to get a good tree. Can't you even tell a good tree from a poor tree? I told you he'd goof it up. He's not the kind you can depend on to do anything right. You're hopeless, Charlie Brown. Completely hopeless. Rats. You've been dumb before, Charlie Brown, but this time you really did it. <laughs> what a tree. I guess you were right, Linus. I shouldn't have picked this little tree. Everything I do turns into a disaster. I guess I really don't know what Christmas is all about. Isn't there anyone who knows what Christmas is all about? Sure, Charlie Brown. I can tell you what Christmas is all about. Lights, please. And there were in the same country shepherds, abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them. And they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you, you shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. That's what Christmas is all about, Charlie Brown. and glory 
That, that was uh, Steve Gant. Steve has become a great close friend. I would consider him a close friend and, uh, and uh, helps with our breakfast ministry every week comes and he's been so faithful. And I love you, Steve. Thank you for sharing your gifts and talents this morning and putting the focus on Christ in the night, this special night. So thank you. Thank you for doing that tonight. Uh, tonight. And I pray that this would set the, the tone by the way, what communion is, is a time when we come together and we remember what Christ has done. Some things you may want, I want you to know about communion is if you have never received Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, first of all, I pray that you would have that, that moment that comes in your life that you ask Jesus into your heart. He becomes your Lord and Savior. But you, if that's not something you have ever done, to not partake of this communion. This, I would like for you to be able to watch and witness what, what we as believers do, but you're always welcome to come to know Christ as your personal Lord and Savior so that you can commit and commune with us here, here at this time. So we want you to be here, but just uh, hold back on, on partaking or, or taking from the communion if you have never received Christ. Secondly, we want this to be a moment that you remember if there's anything in your life that would stand in the way of you being able to do this communion. Maybe there's some sin that you're holding back or some, some, ang some anger or something that you just need to deal with. We're going to pray in a moment, and I'm going to ask you to just take a moment and you pray. Just ask God, God, say, God, get my heart ready for this. Maybe you need to clean your closet out, so to speak. <laughs> you know, maybe there's some things you, you're holding on to, some anger, some sin, and you just need to let it go. Well, this is a time you can confess and re repent. Just turn from it, re confess it, and get your heart ready. Once we do that, I'm going I'm to have the deacons. I'm going to ask the deacons to go, go ahead and come forward. And they're going to be standing here at the front. And what I want you to do is we'll start from the back row. But we're going to ask you simply to, to come down and take 
one of the communion cups, which is a cup and a wafer together, and take it back to your seat. Take it back to your seat. And once everyone has, has their communion with them, uh, we will then uh, have our time of communion. Would you pray with me that now? Father, in Jesus' name, prepare our hearts. There might be something that we're holding on to now, Father, and I pray that we would confess it, let it go. Uh, and Father, put that aside, Lord, just repent of it, turn from it. Help us to get our hearts right. And now, Father, I pray that this would be a time where we remember, Lord, you came in, in the form of a baby so that you could then live a sinless life and that that time would come when you would allow yourself to be to be crucified by sinful man for their for our sins and we're thankful that you've done this 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 is the one way we we remember that tonight father as a part of christmas and lord we ask all these things in jesus name amen starting from the back if you just start coming forward you can pick up your communion and return to your seats And I'm going, to let, I'm going to let the deacons be excused back to their families as we have this time of remembrance. What you have, by the way, in your hands here, if you'll take this cup, you're going to peel back that, that first layer. And it's going to reveal a wafer. And symbolically, symbolically to that of the Lord's body. As the Lord is, is letting us, helping us to understand what he did for us. And for that reason, God said, Jesus said, you know what, this is my body. As you partake of it, do so in remembrance of me. And as you peel back that next layer, Jesus on that same night when he was with his disciples passed the cup around. A lot of them, by the way, didn't understand exactly what he was doing. It, it didn't make real sense. They weren't, they weren't really, they, they really weren't open to him dying yet. They didn't understand why he had to do it. But he did this so that one day we would remember and know and understand it because because we have the gift of hindsight, we can now look back and know why he did this for us. But he took the cup that night as he passed it around. And he says, this is my blood. As you drink of it, do so in remembrance of me.
Father, as we take communion, as we've taken this and we remember, I pray that we would never forget the sacrifice that you made for us in the name of Jesus. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Earlier I mentioned that, that my, I'm, we're lighting candles tonight. And as I, I'm going to light my candle here, I'm lighting my candle uh, directly from what we call the Christ candle. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to begin to pass this around, pass this light around as each of you begin to light your candles. And if, if you would, uh, April, if we'll cut, cut off that back light there, the light right behind you, you're going to see that something's beginning to happen in here. Even as the lights will be turned off, you'll begin to see that each one of you holds a light that will begin to illuminate this room. The Bible says it this way. It says, let your light so shine before men that others might see your good work and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Each of us has a light to carry that comes from the light of Christ. Tonight, I would, what I would like for us all to do, if you would stand with me, we're going to sing joy to the world. When we get to the last stanza, and when you see me raise my candle on the last stanza of joy to the world, we're all going to lift our candles high and in the air as we celebrate this, the, this glorious evening, Christmas Eve, and as we begin to sit, continue to celebrate the birth of our Savior. Sing with me.
richly bless you this season. As we go, go in peace and go with the light of Christ in your life. God bless. This will be, this will conclude this service and we can't wait. And if you're not, if I tell you what, if you're, you're up for it tomorrow, come and worship with us at 11 o'clock tomorrow morning here at Northside. God bless.